The DAS28 examination is a fast and easy way of assessing the level of activity of joint disease in a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. Because it's a validated index, combining several aspects of disease activity into a continuous measure, the DAS28 gives us a reliable and consistent means to track the disease process in an individual over time. It is one of the most efficient and accurate ways of assessing the disease status of a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, and it helps us to know if their condition is stable, improving or deteriorating. The DAS28 is a composite measure. It always includes the joint examination for tenderness and swelling. Depending on the version you're using, it may also include laboratory measurements of ESR or CRP and the patient's own assessment of their global health. It's calculated by a mathematical formula available online or on program calculators. A patient with a score over 5 has highly active rheumatoid arthritis. A score less than 2 indicates that the patient's disease is in remission or they have minimal symptoms. The 28 joint count involves the assessment of 28 joints comprising the shoulders, elbows, wrists, knees and joints in the hand. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the standard techniques for examining each of the joints included in the DAS28 assessment. By following these standard examination techniques, we can reduce the variation of assessment results from different examiners. This gives us a clearer picture of a patient's disease progress. This video will take you step by step through the 28 joints and will demonstrate the standardised approach for the best results. Before we do that, there are some general guidelines to bear in mind. Firstly, make sure the joints that are being examined are well supported. For examination of the joints of the hand, have the patient's hands resting on a pillow. For the shoulder and elbow joints, have the patient sitting comfortably. The knee is best examined with the patient lying on an examination couch. When carrying out the DAS joint examination, test for tenderness first. When you palpate the joints to test for tenderness, press hard enough to see the whites of your nail bed. And remember, look for the patient's reaction while you're doing this. Once you've finished testing all joints for tenderness, you return to the beginning and examine all 28 joints for swelling. The techniques for examining tenderness and swelling are very similar. In some situations, and with practice, it is possible to combine an examination for both tenderness and swelling. Joints are assessed for swelling by observation and palpation. You're looking for soft tissue swelling, not bony swelling or deformities. On examination, it feels boggy to the touch. We begin the DAS28 assessment with the joints of the hand. Start by examining the proximal interphalangeal joints for tenderness. Examine each PIP joint in turn with the patient's hand extended. With your thumb and index finger on both sides of the joint, palpate all sides of the joint, feeling the lateral and medial joint margins. Stabilise the joint with your other thumb and forefinger. Move to the metacarpophalangeal joints next. There are two examination methods that can be adopted for the MCP joints. Either the patient's hand is examined in a flexed position, with the MCP joints flexed at approximately 50 degrees. Palpate each side of the joint margin with both thumbs. Alternatively, the patient's hand is examined resting flat on a surface such as a pillow in a neutral position. Using the thumb and forefinger, all the MCP joints are examined in sequence. Examine the wrist joint in a neutral position with the hands placed on a pillow. Use both your thumbs to examine the dorsal surface of the patient's wrist, palpating along the joint margin with your fingers on the palmar surface. When examining the elbow joint, start by flexing the patient's elbow between 70 and 80 degrees. You'll need to examine using both your hands. Place your thumb between the olecranon and the lateral epicondyle, 
and then place your index finger in the antecubital fossa. Unlike the other joints, examination of the shoulder for tenderness is done by passive movement and not by palpation. Firstly, have the patient remove their clothing so that their arms and shoulders are clearly visible and unrestricted. Grip the shoulder joint between your thumb and fingers and hold the patient's arm slightly flexed. Passively abduct the shoulder from 0 through 50 degrees. If the shoulder is damaged, Pain will be inevitable if the shoulder is moved excessively, so take particular care not to move beyond 50 degrees. Observe if the movement has caused any pain or tenderness. Move next to the knee joint. For this examination, you should have the patient lying on an examination couch. Use your examining hand to palpate the medial and lateral aspects of the tibiofemoral joint. Check the patient's reaction for tenderness. For a large joint, you may need to use both hands. Now move through the joints from distal to proximal once again, this time testing for swelling. The methods for assessing swelling are very similar to those used when testing for tenderness. Once again, examine each PIP joint in turn with the patient's hand extended. Feeling the lateral and medial joint margins while exerting pressure alternatively on the palmar and dorsal aspects of the joint. Feel for fluctuation of the soft tissue. When examining the MCP joints for swelling, make sure you palpate either side of the joint margins using both your thumbs feeling for the characteristic bogginess of synovial swelling or fluctuating synovial fluid. Continue until all the MCP joints have been assessed. Once again, make sure the wrist joint is in a neutral position with the hand placed on a pillow. As before, use your thumbs to examine the dorsal aspect of the patient's wrist palpating along the joint margin with your fingers on the palmar surface. Then, Gently dorsiflex the wrist 10 to 20 degrees and palmiflex the wrist 10 to 20 degrees. Make sure you exert mild pressure from both your thumbs while you're doing this so you feel for any swelling. Remember to start the examination by flexing the patient's elbow between 70 and 80 degrees. Just as you did when examining for tenderness, place your thumb between the olecranon and the lateral epicondyle and then place your index finger in the antecubital fossa. You'll feel any synovial swelling with your thumb. With the patient's arms and shoulders clearly visible, observe for any swelling. Then grip the shoulder joint between your thumb and fingers and hold the patient's arm slightly flexed. Feel for soft tissue thickening beneath your thumb. Finally, examine the knee joint for swelling. Use your examining hand to palpate either side of the tibiofemoral joint, feeling for swelling. A larger amount of fluid is detected using the patella tap. Milk the fluid out of the suprapatellar pouch, then press firmly on the patella, feeling whether the patella hits the femur. The swipe test can detect a small amount of fluid. Sweep along the side of the knee and watch carefully for the fluid returning. Make sure all the tender and swollen joint counts are recorded on the DAS28 score sheet. Mark them on the diagram separately to show the presence of tenderness and swelling. Each joint is scored either 0 or 1. If there is no tenderness, the score is 0. You give a score of 1 when tenderness is present. The same goes for scoring swelling. If there is no swelling, the score is 0, and if swelling exists, you score it 1. The individual joint scores are added up to give separate totals for tenderness and swelling. Combine these totals with the other variables for whichever version of the DAS28 you are using.
put the scores into a DAS calculator to arrive at the final DAS score. Even when using standardised techniques for examination, there will always be some variation between examiners, bringing with it some risk of inconsistency of results. Having more than one person examine the patient and agree the findings between them improves inter-observer standardisation and therefore the consistency of the results. Agreement meetings are recommended and should be held regularly. Make sure you use these techniques each time you carry out a DAS-28 assessment to minimise variation in results. By following these standardised techniques, you'll have a more reliable way of understanding your patient's disease activity and how to treat it.